Chapter 2, Section 2.3, we're going to explain the metric system and explain how to perform metric conversions using dimensional analysis. So here are the metric prefixes. Tera is capital T, Giga, capital G, Mega, capital M, Kilo, K, Hecta, H, Deca, D-A. A base unit could be one of a few things, and we'll get back to the base unit in a moment. Deci, lowercase d, centi, c, milli, m. Micro is a u with a stem in the front of it. So if you were to draw a u and then you place a stem straight down the front, that would be the symbol for micro right here. N is for nano, and pico is a lowercase p. So a base unit could be one of the following. You could have gram, you could have liter or meter. Technically anything could be a base unit. So other base units might be something like bytes such as megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes or hertz. So megahertz, gigahertz or mole could be a base unit and there is such a thing as a millimole. So any unit could be a base unit, and then prefixes are placed in front of those units to give them definition, to give them scale. So now the way we're going to read this chart is realizing that between tera and giga, they are separated by a factor of 1,000. So I'm putting a little 3 here, realizing that 1,000 has three zeros behind it. Between giga and mega, they are also separated by a factor of 1,000. Mega and kilo, 1,000. Between kilo and hecta, they're separated by a factor of 10. 10 has only one zero in it. So I place a one here. These are also separated by factors of 10. And then when you get back down here to between milli and micro, they again are separated by 1,000. Micro to nano, 1,000. Nano to pico, 1,000. So what does that mean exactly? It means that if you count from the base unit, we're going to assign, as we're counting down from the base unit, from the base to deci, there is a difference of 10. From deci to, or from the base to centi, we would have 10 times 10, which is a factor of 100. If we count from the base to milli, we have 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1,000. From milli to micro, we have 1,000 now times another 1,000 because there's a factor of 1,000 between milli and micro. So 1,000 times 1,000 will actually give me 1 million. However, we would rather not write all those zeros, so it's really more efficient to write it as 1 times 10 to the 6. So instead, we'll have 1 times 10 to the 6. If I go from micro from the base all the way down to nano, I'm going to take that 1 million times 1,000, and that's going to give me 1 times 10 to the 9. From nano to pico, that's going to give me 1 times 10 to the 12. It's going to be the same as we go upwards, and I'll explain why when we do an example. So from the base to deca, it's 10. From the base to hecta, it's 100. From the base to kilo, it's 1,000. From the base to mega, it's 1 times 10 to the 6. From the base to giga, it's 1 times 10 to the 9. And from the base to tera, it's 1 times 10 to the 12. So notice I'm always counting from the base unit is the goal. All right, let's do an example. So my first example I'll do 4.5 centiliters is equal to how many deciliters? And so here's the process you want to follow. We're going to take our given 4.5 centiliters and put it over 1, because that's how you start dimensional analysis, times draw a line. I'm going to bring down centiliter. And now the idea is to go to the base. Right now we are here at centi. We need to get to here, the base unit. So the base unit of centiliter is liter. If you cover up the prefix, then you know what the base unit is. Now the question is, what do I assign as a value to liter and what do I assign to centiliter? And this is going to be kind of a rule for you. 
we're going to give liter here a 1 because the larger unit is always assigned a value of 1. So that being said, we're going to have a 1 here because between liter, which is at the base, and centi, which is below it, liter is a larger value. Remember, this chart goes from largest down to smallest. Now I need to know how many centiliters should I put here? And if you count down from the base, we count 10, 100. So this would be 10, this would be 100. So there are 100 centiliters in a liter. Now I'm going to keep going one more step because I'm trying to get to deciliter. So I bring down liters. I'm going to put deciliter on top. Between these two, the larger unit is here, deca. So we're going to give deciliter the one. As I count from the base to deca, there's one step, so that's 10. So in one deciliter, there are 10 liters. Realize that there are other ways to use this system. However, in this scenario, if we are always assigning the larger unit a one, that means your other unit is smaller and therefore should be a number greater than one, always. So in order to solve this, first I'm going to cancel my units. Centiliters cancel, liters cancel, and I'm left with deciliter. So I'll grab my calculator and I'm going to type in 4.5 divided by 100 divided by 10, and that gives me 0.0045 as my answer. So 0 0.0045 decaliters is my final answer. Let's try another example. Here my given is going to be 0 0.035 milligrams. I'm going to place that over 1, times draw a line, bring down milligrams, and now remember your goal at the moment we are here at milli. The goal is to get to the base. So we're going to go from milligram to gram, because gram is the base unit. Now the question is, which of these two is larger? Because the base unit is higher up than milli, gram is larger, so I will assign it a 1. Now I determine how many milligrams there are, and if you count, we have 10, 100, 1,000. So one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. Now I'm going to go one more step, bring down gram, and we can go from the base to any other unit, and in this case we're trying to go to centigram. Between gram and centigram, so now I'm actually trying to get here, from the base to centi, it's, well first of all, the base unit grams is my larger unit, so it's going to get a 1. And if I count from the base to centi, I get 10, 100. So 100 is the amount of centigrams equal to 1 gram. So now I can cancel out my milligrams, cancel out my grams, and I'm left with centigrams as the unit on my final answer. So now we can type it into the calculator. 0 0.035 divided by 1,000 times 100 equals 0.0035 centigrams. Okay, we have 5.5 kilograms and we're trying to convert that to grams. So I'm going to take my given 5.5 kilograms, put it over 1, times draw a line, bring down kilograms, and I'm trying to get to the base. We are starting out here at kilo and your goal is to get down here to the base unit. Kilograms has a base unit of grams, which just so happens to be the unit that we're trying to have for our final answer. So this will only have one step. Between kilo and the base, kilogram is larger. So I'm going to give it a value of a 1. Now I need to know how many grams are there in that 1 kilogram. And if I count from the base to kilo, I get 10, 100, 1,000. Now my setup is complete, kilograms will cancel, 5.5 times 1,000 is equal to 5,500, 
and grams of course is my unit. One last one, and this one's very challenging. We're going to write down our given 2 times 10 to the negative 13 gigameters. Put it over 1 times draw a line. When you bring down gigameters, the goal, here's giga, and the goal is to get to the base. The base unit of gigameter is meter. Of the two, giga is larger, so I'm going to give it the value of a 1. Now I need to determine how many meters are there in that gigameter. So as I count from the base, this is going to be a little bit stranger. We're going to count it like this. 10, 100, 1,000. 1 times 10 to the 6, 1 times 10 to the 9. So we have 1 times 10 to the 9 meters. So it goes 10, 100, 1,000, 1E6, 1E9. If I were to go to Terra, it would then be 1E12. Okay, now times, draw a line, bringing down meter, and now I can go from the base to any other unit that I want to, and I'm trying to get to nanometer, so I'm going to put nanometer up here. Between, so here's nano, and here's the base. Between these two, the base is a larger unit, so I'm going to put the one next to meter, my base unit. Now I'm going to count from the base to nano. This one counts similarly. 10, 100, 1,000, 1E6, 1E9. So this will be 1 times 10 to the 9. Same thing. And I'm done setting up my problem. Gigameters will both cancel. I'm left with nanometers for my unit on my final answer. And now we're going to find the answer to this one. We have 2E, or EXP in this case, we need this to be a negative 13. We're going to do times 1e to the 9 and then times 1e9 again equals. And that gives me 200,000. And that's nanometers. That is the same thing as writing 2 times 10 to the 5 nanometers.